But it's the same with any seminar that you go to. I've seen it all the time, and you, you call these people technique collectors, whatever. They go from seminar to seminar to seminar. Every month they're at a seminar. They go there. They do the seminar. They do the drills. They never go back to their dojo, practice what the drill was teaching them, mm. what they were learning from it, make more material out of it. Yeah. It's just, oh, I went there. I did that. It was really good fun. I'm going to another one in a month's time. That will be really good fun as well. Why? But you need to have a... All of us should have... Past experience, we have been doing maybe three K karate for fifty years or something, gobbled down. Mm -hmm. Then you get new things, but you don't know how to fit it into your yeah. original curriculum. So what mm -hmm. do I do? But it was fun, but I can't fit it in, and so I just continue doing my old stuff. I think. Yeah. Many, yeah. many people. You've got to overcome that. Yeah. Yeah. That inertia. Yeah. Really and and the sad that. thing is, because people often do this, it places the seminar instructors themselves. Um, in the position where they end up, they may be, they may go to the same club mm -hmm. year on year and year, and they just end up teaching the same thing. And they might use a different springboard for it. So one year they yeah. might teach a concept through one kata, mm -hmm. another year the club's all excited. Oh, this year he's doing this kata, yeah. but actually they're teaching the same stuff. Mm. Very much um, because because we will because that's that's kind of well, what we know. Yeah, yeah, so. When you when you boil it down, there aren't that many things to know. So it's just what you dress it up is mm, yeah. In for, yeah, yeah. to get that idea across. The, 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 but, but, yeah. but the sad yeah. thing is they, they, they don't get to take these students a level further no. because they're constantly essentially doing the same seminar yeah. again and again and again. Yeah. So we ourselves are not maximising the seminar instructors. No. Uh, unfortunately. But I, I appreciate it. It's, it's very it. difficult. If you're, but if you have still fixed in that, I must spend thirty percent of my time doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's also very difficult if you are the only person in your group yeah. who has that interest and that mindset. You can't go back there and say, "Oh, we're going to do this now." Easy for people like me. I just walked away and said, "Okay, I'm doing my own thing now." And people who want to train with me come and do yeah. what I want to do. But a lot of people don't have that opportunity, or they yeah. don't have that mindset, or they don't have the experience, and they're, they're stuck early level. We do this, we march up and down to the numbers. I'd really like to do the other stuff. I go to the seminar, but then I haven't got anybody. No, but even though we have maybe five or three instructors that are, have the same level of mm -hmm. understanding, we want to do it together, but the rest of the instructors, the rest of the student, they're not ready. No. Mm -hmm. So you can't, if you change, then you lose all the people. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's, that's it's, it's how to introduce stuff. Yeah, it is. Gradually. I mean, I have to say, I'm, I'm incredibly impressed with the Malta Karate Federation because I've, I've been there four years in the trot now. And um, they, they introduced the sport side of karate quite a number of years back. And mm -hmm. it was one of the people on the technical committee who, who made the choice. And he experienced a lot of opposition from the people who were, no, we just do classical karate, we don't compete and all this. But it completely brought in a whole new tranche of people an age group into that big association and they're very very successful at it and they bring in mm -hmm. top kata and kumite mm. competition people to train the kids and they, and they have a really strong junior and teenager and adult lot but they've also got these this group of people who are just coming up to the black belt and you know they're starting to sort of like look wistfully a bit like that meme of the man who's looking back at the, the other girl, mm -hmm. you know, they're starting to look wistfully at other styles and other ways of doing things. And so, you know, in addition to all this WKA stuff, WKF stuff, and their classical karate stuff, they have Chris Denwood come over every year, and he's teaching Okinawan mm. uh, sort of approaches um, to them. And they, they get a good turnout of the senior grades and some of the junior crew grades. And they're getting involved with that, and they're running projects with that. And then they've had me across, and I'm teaching more sort of like a, a Western, and does it work? Mm -hmm. can, can I use this in a way that works sort of approach? And, you know, I don't really care what past people said. You know, I'm just looking at, can I make this form useful for you in some way that mm -hmm. you're not just dancing as you mm -hmm. do the movements? Yeah. Uh, because often, in, particularly in Shotokan, uh, the, the kata can be very, very different from the Keon and the Kumite. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it does show that it is possible for an organisation to, to be a broad church. Mm -hmm. But, it, I mean, it is hard, and they've told me, it's hard for us to meet our syllabus requirements and yes. mm -hmm. do this. Mm. And sometimes they've had to run some extra sessions uh, 
to do it. Yeah. But at least they're, they're, they're managing somehow. I wish more more groups would. Well, it's yeah, because it's not so much that it's easy to do, is it? It's the fact that they're open-minded enough to realise that if we offer this to people, they're not all going to stop doing this and just do this instead. They're going to take this on board as being over and above and sitting on top of what they do. Yeah. And that seems to be the closed-minded bit of a lot of the, the classical organisations is we don't want people exposed to anything else because if they're exposed to something else, then a percentage of them are going to go and do that instead and we'll never see them again. And I don't think that's true, to be perfectly honest. If it wasn't for some of the interpersonal things that happened, I would probably still be training with my original group. I was perfectly happy because I've been doing what I've been doing for about 10 years before I left, but I was still turning up and training two, three times a week in my classical stuff with that group. Mm. But it was brought to a head that I wanted to do more of this, and it had been decided that, well, you can't do that and do this, so if you don't want to do this, come, don't come back. Fair enough, it's your choice then, not mine. Yeah. So now I do what I do. But if, if you've got that attitude, I think that's a better way to drive people away than giving them the opportunity to experience different things. Mm. Brian, I mean, you've made, over the last three, four years, you know, you, you've made a lot of changes to how you train and teach with your guys and how the mm. syllabus has gone. And to me, as an outsider, it feels as if it's it's been a snowball effect. It started off small and it's got bigger mm. and bigger and bigger. But overall, um, how do you feel it's, it's changed the the atmosphere of the club and, and the numbers and, and things for you? Uh, it's an, yeah, interesting. I think numbers-wise, probably the same, I would say. Although retention, so I'm, the people that come to do what I do, enjoy what we do, I get people travel to come and do what we do. So um, we're based in Dunsbar, I've got probably got people driving 40 minutes to up to an hour to come and train. Um, we're doing that on a weekly basis, so you've got, I've got my core students which are local, but you've got the senior, sort of, which, you know, black belts coming to do it. I don't know if they're doing it, is it, is it um, the bit on the side? Well, <laughs> yeah, that's, so, that's, you know, that's what I build yeah, myself as. Yeah. I'm not looking to take other people's students, but if they want that extra bit, then I'm there for it. Come and train when you want to train. Mm. Take away what you can. But yes, yeah, it, was, it was tiny steps initially, and then I think, oh, yeah. The, the biggest thing I spoke to you about it was dropping five step. Yeah. And when you, when you said, well, it's just teaching bad habits from the off, you know, you're stepping back, or five step, or three steps, and you're stepping back, you're doing that three or five times, yeah. um, and you're teaching your students to go onto the back foot immediately. You know, this is not a good thing. So, yeah, dropping that was the huge thing because it kind of disassociates yourself with um, the classical karate. I mean, the only thing that ties us in, really, is the kata. You know, so, they're a series of Shotokan because we're doing Shotokan Kata. And that's... I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, it's funny how controversial a, a syllabus based on Kata can be. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's interesting how, because you know, you've got the people who do bits of application, but there are people who do application and they, they kind of do it as icing on the cake of their karate. Mm -hmm. And there are other people who go, no, uh, the application, or at least live drilling, paired work, mm -hmm. close call of work, etc. That is the cake. That's the uh, core to our service, yeah. really. Yeah. So, yeah. dropping five step. Once we introduce. You're going to come this side, and then we're, we're <laughs> kind of we're shooing into the camera. We're all in, aren't we? Zoom, zoom in yeah. a bit more. I don't know. You can zoom it in as much as you like. Yeah, yeah because there's a big distance yeah. between. We don't mind if your head's not showing. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I can yeah. film. I can film you guys. Dropping five step was the big thing because right? yeah. that, that is associated with, with mm -hmm. classical craft. Yeah. But replacing it with cat partner drills, you know, um, pad drills. It was. It was a, once. Once we made that change, it was easy. Then, you know, we could see it was far more beneficial. Um, so our five step now is is cat pair work, and mm -hmm. I, it might be way way better. Let's shift over a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Okay. Tell you what, let's yeah. stop this. Yeah. This is part one. Part <laughs> one is over now, folks. Okay. And we'll, we'll do it because otherwise, people are looking up. My God, they're rambling on. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The only thing I would say, just as a quick final comment to that, is even for yourself, do you find it takes a long time to reach that decision to give up 
on the stuff that you've done for decades. It, it, it takes no, yeah, you, didn't want to give up, you didn't want to give up your line work. Even, no, even yeah. though you know it's not productive, it's still really hard to walk yeah. away from it. Well, we still do line work, but it's a small part of, you know, so I'd say, say we small. Small. Yeah, it's 80% is pair work, and then yeah. 20%, so in that 20% solo is cat up and a bit of line work.